Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here. Once again, you know, originally I planned on reviewing another bad movie called My Soul to Take. And, but what happened was yesterday, Safi, she did the same old Safi thing where she she you know she really doesn't understand how long it takes to edit and upload it takes like hours and so she she like waited until like 3 or 4 in the afternoon to finish the rankings so we you know I just decided you know what I'll just well, I'll just do something myself make sure that it'll be on time that it'll be earlier than yesterday when we had to go out just to upload um so anyways I decided to watch a movie I've been wanting to watch for a little bit. I don't know how long it's been out. And it's actually my first new movie that I've watched in a quite a while. I mean, I'm just I'm so sick of watching new movies. They're just they're just not worth it. They're I mean, they're worth it, I guess, to attract the attention cuz then people can go watch the other videos. But they're just not good. They're just not, uh, you know, they're they're all like, I don't know, like they're just, none of the, the big new movies, they don't feel like they're made by creative people. They just feel like they're uh, products, and I don't really want to consume any products. I want to watch movies and <laughs> review movies and TV shows. And uh, so that's pretty hard to do nowadays because everything is just so bad and I wanted to watch this, though, because last year, or earlier this year, I can't remember when I did I think it might have been February or January, December, I don't, I don't know. I reviewed this guy's other movie, The Female Hustler, and that movie, it was pretty, really, really good in a, in a good, bad way, where there were a lot of funny things in it, you know. <laughs> I mean, where do I even begin the opening credits uh, that looked like like a scrapbook font out of iMovie where you're like putting together a family slideshow and it, <laughs> it looked like a, like a scrapbook thing. Like it was so funny. And then like the opening credits, they have the sex scene. He's just, this guy's just like pile driving his, his girlfriend. He's like doing a tombstone pile driver on her. And he's just going like, BOOM! BOOM! And like, he's like, it's, it, it looked like painful. Like, she, she was like, it, it was terrifying. It was like a, like a monster movie. Like fucking Jurassic World. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was hardcore. And there were, <laughs> there were so many other funny things. There's this moment where the main character, she's sitting at the breakfast table with her brother and, and she just she's she just doesn't care about any of the things that she sang and so it, it it came off as really hilarious and then of course the highlight of the movie was the scene where the female hustler she's in california on the beach and this this random guy he runs up to her and he goes ah and he like bumps into her on purpose and like fucking like he's he's in a football field and he 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 bumps into her really hard and he's like oh sorry you good you sure you good and he's like you like tacos let's go get some tacos and i just thought that was the funniest pickup line i've ever heard and it was so funny that I actually went around doing it to random people as a social experiment online. And it actually, surprisingly, it got me tons and tons and tons of uh, potential, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so it actually worked, surprisingly. It was very bizarre. But that movie was very, very good. It was very entertaining and it's sad because looking back, I wish that I had put it like in my top five or something of the year. And I, I, I think I put it like in the middle or like below the middle. But looking back, I really wish that I had put it like at number three or number four of the year. Because 
watching this movie, I realized how much I liked that movie even more than I did before. Now, that's not to say this was a bad movie. This is his second movie, Temporary Suspicion. It's not to say that that, this is a bad movie, but there were a couple of issues that stood out as the film went on and on. Because at first, it did kind of start out like it was going to actually be a genuinely good movie. And it, it seemed like, okay, he's learned from his mistakes. I mean, the, the opening. He, he, you know, you could tell it was like stock footage of like science stock footage. But, you know, it, it looked like a good opening. It looked so much better of an opening than the female hustler where it was like this, like, Hallmark movie, Lifetime movie, scrapbooking font. You know, this time it looked like a real movie, like, opening that you would see. And it made sense. It was kind of like looking at the brain and looking at, you know, it, it made sense with, like, okay, obviously people are going to forget who this guy is, and so how does that happen? Is it, does he get, like, an implant in his head, or does... I don't know. Like, we literally, literally don't know until, like, the last four minutes of the movie. Uh, and so it started off like, okay, this has the potential to be really, really good. I really like the story idea. I thought it was a much better story idea than the female hustler, for sure. And the idea is just that you have this guy, and he's... He's a mixed bag of a person. Like he's the the main guy in this movie, Robert, he's like he's like a smooth operator. Like he is a smooth talking, charismatic, like he, he he has so much swagger. I feel like this guy the whole movie he's wearing this like business overcoat, which that was another thing that was strange was it was surprising how he didn't get all of his clothing stolen from him because he had on these like expensive sort of business clothes and it felt like, okay, if, he, if he's in this homeless environment sometime in the movie, <laughs> it's not a big spoiler. You know, if he can't, if he, if no one knows who he is, obviously he's just going to wander around. And so any, you know, in any way, you know, people could steal his clothes it felt like I I thought that was going to happen because that's happened in other films before. Um, even with like non-homeless people, like if you think about Adventures in Babysitting where uh, Brenda's sitting in the, the train station or the bus station, whatever, and uh, that, ran <laughs> that random woman steals her glasses and then switches them <laughs> with her glasses because she apparently her glasses suck and she couldn't afford like real glasses and that you know that's what I felt like was going to happen in this movie was the guy was going to have to like wear rags or something or some sort of like a because the whole he looks like American Psycho this guy Robert like I swear if you put this guy in a remake of American Psycho or a quote-unquote American Psycho you know a fake American Psycho he would do such a fucking incredible job because he, he just talks like so smoothly and he's like, oh, you know, something happened. Nobody can remember who I am. And, uh, oh, you want some chocolate chip pancakes? I can make some chocolate chip pancakes for you. And he ju he just has like this smooth voice, like he's he's like a fucking Denzel Washington Jr. over here, and he he should really be American Psycho. Like I could totally see him, uh, you know, in that one scene where he's like, "Don't just stare at it, Sabrina. Eat it, eat her ass, Sabrina." You know, I could totally see him doing that. I swear he would be the greatest American psycho ever. Uh, you know, he has the look. He has a, a cool haircut. It's like a, it, it's a, it's a strange, I've never seen that type of haircut before, but it's cool. And he has this, this American psycho business coat on. He would do such a good job as American psycho. It's not even funny. That totally took me by surprise. Uh, this, uh, this American psycho personality. And it, it, okay, so he he's married. He has kids, and he goes to his office. Robert does, and there's this temp there, 
And the temp is played by the one and only Nellie Ann. And of course, Nellie Ann, she was also in his last film, The Female Hustler. She is a fucking goddess, and she is a, a great actress for sure. I mean, she, she's so good in this film for the little time that she has, and, you know, every time she's on screen, it's, it's like you're, I don't know, you, you get some, you get some fifis, you get, you get some tingles, she gives you a lot of tingles and sensations from her, she, she just has this charm and this cutesy, uh, I don't know, cutesy type of, like, mannerisms to her that make her a really adorable and fun personality, and a fun character, and it sort of seems like maybe she's in some way responsible for him losing his mem- losing his his identity because then after that everyone in the world forgets who he is so nobody knows who he is and he has to wander around to figure out who he is now in short i want to do a non-spoiler review and then i'll get into spoilers cuz there's a lot of spoilers to discuss so short and sweet I did kind of like this movie. This movie was more of a middle movie for me. It was more of a mid-tier move, movie, whereas I it, that's why I was saying it made me realize that I liked the female hustler more than I did. I thought I did is because I put the female hustler in the middle and I would rather put this movie in like a middle category and then put the female hustler a lot higher. So it had for the the good things about it were I love the acting from Robert his wife I really loved this guy's wife I mean she was another babe and she she was a great actress in the film I thought she did a really good job even though she didn't have a lot of time you know there was one bad scene near the end but we'll get to that I I think that had more to do with the script though maybe in terms of like I don't really think it was her acting that was bad, necessarily. So I really like them. I love the main two actors. I also love some of the side characters, too. I love the cops, even though it was that typical small movie thing where the same cops show up over and over. But it it was funny, though, because it just felt like I almost wanted to see like a a super bad style story involving these cops where, you know, something weird happens and then, oh, here we are again with this guy. Oh, here we are again. (laughs) And so, like, they just showed up over and over and over again. And and I felt bad for them. They must have to drink a lot of coffee for sure. And then what else? Um... Oh yeah, and I I was actually kind of starting to miss the female hustler, uh, the actress who played her, and so I got really excited for her to show up because I did see the cast list before I watched the movie, and she showed up, and she's like, hey, hey rabbit, and she comes up to him, and she's like, my name is Taint, and so the rest of the movie, I was like, is is her name really Taint? (laughs) She... She plays this crazy sort of weird homeless woman, and she did a pretty good job. But you no, know, her name was not Taint; it was Tink, like Tinker Bell. But I did enjoy her, and so I really liked the acting. I thought the acting was definitely an improvement over the female hustler in terms of I I did think everyone did a better job, and I felt like there was a lot more. It was a lot better acting and not like acting in a good bad way. So I liked that too. I thought that that was great that the acting all improved. So let's see, was there anything else? There were a couple of cool shots too. You know, there was this one cool shot where uh, Robert, he's walking along the, the, the sidewalk and there's this big, big like graffitied, uh, this graffiti uh, wall that he's walking next to. And it was a really cool shot because normally nowadays it feels like, I feel like people would just cut that shot and they would just like, okay, he walked a little bit next to the, next to the graffiti uh, wall, 
But no, they show like almost the entire graffiti wall. They go all, they, they pan all the way to the left to the point of where <laughs> you got these little twigs in the shot. And But I really like that shot. And there were a couple of really cool shots like that throughout the movie. And uh, of course, I loved Madame Nellie Ann, uh, the temp, the weird temp. Uh, she did a really good job as usual, and we'll get to the spoilers about that because I don't know. I mean, it 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 kept on trying to throw you for a loop, and so I I won't even. It's not even giving anything away. I promise. And the movie in general, I would say, if if you want to know what this movie's like, it's sort of like After Hours a little bit. The, the Fisher King a little bit, and the Twilight Zone. And so what I actually did was, about 20 minutes into the movie, I was like, oh, hell no, I am not watching this whole movie in, in color. I'm not watching this movie to where it looks kind of like a, a music video. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to turn off all the colors so that this actually looks like the Twilight Zone, and so I watched the whole movie, the the rest of the movie in black and white, and I actually thought that it made the movie look even cooler to watch it all in black and white. It definitely had a Twilight Zone feel after that, and so I would say if if the script had a, it had improvement, a little bit improvement overall, that this movie would be a pretty good Twilight Zone episode. You know, it just needed a, a couple of adjustments here and there uh, in terms of dialogue. And so now we'll get into the bad. This movie was full of little ideas. And just like with the female hustler, none of the ideas really had time to breathe. Like there were a couple of moments where you thought, okay, this could be a really cool sequence. The sequence where two characters meet and then the sequence ends in like two seconds. And then you move on to the next one, the next one. And it's very ambitious in terms of, you know, he goes all over the city, it seems like. And instead of that, I felt like they could have just narrowed, they could have done, I don't, I don't know. They could have, because I'm trying to think, like, this is a smaller movie. I'm trying to think if I would have done it, you know, you could have, like, narrowed it down to, like, four or five sequences and then cut all the rest. But you'd have you'd have to figure out some sort of way to figure out which four or five sequences were the best. Because there were a couple that just were kind of like, eh, this is kind of weird, this is weird. But then there were some that were really good, but they didn't really go on for very long. And so that was the movie's main problem for me. And then you'd have all these answers to things that, that you thought were true. And then they're not true. And, you know, there's a lot of temporary suspicioning in this movie. You know, like, the guy goes around and he, he temporarily suspicious everybody. And, <laughs> and then other people temporarily sp- suspiciously him, too. And so everyone's just, like, temporarily suspicioning each other. And... <laughs> And it's pretty hilarious if you if you watch it with like a, a a good bad lens in terms of like there is just constant temporary suspicioning, like there are all these times that you like take a shot every time the characters will like look at each other with like a ooh ooh is that person telling the truth ooh uh, ooh ooh. Ooh. Oh no. <gasps> like just take a shot every time that happens because everybody in this movie is temporarily suspicious of each other to the <laughs> to the point of where you could laugh. But I didn't really laugh in the film except for a couple of times where I was just, you know, kind of whatever. And the answers that we got, you know, there were a couple of things that he did in the movie that were very questionable. The main character, he he made some very questionable decisions at one point, and then it, it kind of. There was also a weird. Okay, we I'll have to talk about it in spoilers, because I, it's killing me not to talk about these spoilers and just say blank 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 blank. 
overall, I would say that this is a this is an okay movie. It's it's another movie where I would say it's good for like a Saturday night where you want to stay home, you want to have dinner in a movie, and it's for free. It's on Tubi. The only problems that problem that I had was for some reason every time the commercials would end I would see the opening logo and then it would jump forward to the part in the movie and so I I guess that's just me but like that that was an issue for me throughout the whole thing for fucking Tubi I, I don't understand like Tubi should be on top of their game they shouldn't be letting things like that happen um but it's a fun movie, and I would recommend it because it was fresh, it was refreshing, and it was new and original, and there were things to like in it. And it's it's so much more fun to watch movies like this, where like these people who are making it, they all have potential, they're all doing their best, and whenever you criticize them you're always criticizing them with a caveat of like, oh, I hope you get better. I hope you improve with that. It's not like a malicious thing, like with these big studios where they're spewing out shit and it's like, okay, fuck off. Go jump off a cliff and uh, shut down your studio because you suck balls. Uh, fucking, uh, who, who, uh, actually, there was one really, really bad, and, and I won't even say the name of it, because, of course, there are some, uh, I don't want to talk about that one, let's just say it was a Christmas movie that I reviewed, and that would have been an example of, like, a smaller filmmaker who I would, I do not like, because she goes around deleting people's reviews, and she's, she's a, a, she's a weirdo, and, and, but but this guy who made the female hustler he's really good and i hope that his next movie is even better because this movie was slightly better you could say technically because the acting was better it seemed like a more competent film overall but i did have more fun with the female hustler so let's get into spoilers so one of the th- problems that i had in the film was he suspects that the temp is responsible. This sexy Latina temp played by the one and only Nellie Ann. And he suspects her and he thinks like, okay, she must be responsible because she came into my office. She looked at me funny. She giggled at me. And it's like, okay, she's the one. She's she's a bad girl. She's got some this like some sort of a jealousy switch over where maybe she just wanted my job so she did all this uh magic stuff and so we like switched places where maybe she used to be homeless and it's like okay this is kind of cliche but that's not what it turned out to be but what I thought was like why didn't he just go to her from the beginning like he he really took like a long long time to to go to her and that's why I was saying that you probably could have cut down all the different interactions that he had to like maybe four or five is because it almost felt like in terms of structure that the movie was just okay he goes around having weird interactions and then the plot will move forward with him going to Nellie Ann's house and saying what's up What's up? What's going on? You gotta tell me right now. But he doesn't say it like that. He's like, you tell me what's going on right now. No, you gotta tell me. Just just tell me and I won't kill you. You know, he's, he's very smooth about everything. He's just so smooth that, you know, I could also see him if you ever made like a really dark dating movie where like maybe he's like a really evil dating advice like a pickup artist guy and like maybe he gives guys like magic roofies or something like that's that's like the vibe that I was getting in terms of like he could really play some really sinister smooth talking characters uh but he was really likable in general in the film but he he takes a long time to get to her house and so it felt like 
if you were going to if you were always going to take that long time to get to her house maybe it would have been better to just cut down the interactions to the the best ones uh and so he gets to her house and you know honestly like I would have been like okay here's the deal uh madam uh I mean, what would you even call her? Like, Madam Suspicion or something? Like, because he, he, everyone suspicious that he's like a bad guy. He's like, there's this one part where he goes up to a car and he, he sees like this girl who looks like his daughter. And then this guy thinks he's a pedophile. And, and then there's a part where he, he's like, oh, I, I read this news article where this family got killed and they were a lot like my family. And it's like, oh, okay, is it going to be the cliche thing where the main character died and then uh, it's it's all been like a hallucination or something? You know, they just kept on throwing out ideas at you as if, like, throwing out as many ideas as possible would make you, would make it more of like a, a like a suspenseful experience but it just it it was just kind of like eh like it's it's better to have like one or two and then you really stew over those possibilities like in a uh, psycho you know or actually it's if you're talking about suspense you know you really you really want to tell people what's going on so that then the whole movie it's even more frustrating and you can do a lot more uh I don't, I don't know. It it was strange. And so he goes to her house and you think she's got to be the one. I mean, she's, she's really suspicious herself. She giggles constantly. You know, she's, she's very strange. But I would have totally just been like, you know what, Madam Suspicion, I am willing to become a homeless person. But you, you just have to do one thing for me. Okay. Okay. Madam Suspicion. Have you ever seen the movie The Female Hustler? There's this part at the beginning. And, uh, you know, if we could just go like, BAM! 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 You know, if we can just, if you'll just let me do that, then then I'll forget all about every, I'll forget all about losing my family. I'll forget all about losing my job. Uh, uh, But if you don't, then I'm going to expose you and I'm going to report you to someone or something. I don't know. I mean, there's a million things he could have done. And the thing that he chose to do was to angrily question her with her own gun. And then he, and then he, he like knocks her out or he fantasizes, he kills her. (laughs) It's very weird. And, and, but I would have totally just done that. Like, you know what? This guy was a cheater anyway. Like he he was a, he was a cheater anyway. Oh oh, it was a short thing. We didn't really do anything. Wink wink. But he he was a cheater anyway. And so you know what? Might as well uh, go off with a bang, or or maybe it could have been like a a jealousy switchover thing where he marries her or something, and then uh, his it, that's the price that he pays, or I don't know, but. <sighs> I don't know. I just don't understand why he passed up that golden opportunity. I mean, she was right there. She was right there, and and she, and she was playing games with him. She was a weirdo. She was sort of like a sociopath. And so then he kills her, though. And that just comes out of nowhere. That was one of my biggest problems with the movie, is that, you know, it takes a lot to kill someone. It takes a lot to physically hurt someone to the point of them not being alive anymore. It's a very unnatural thing. It's gross. It's disgusting. It's, it's, it's not, it's not normal. You know, killing people is not an everyday thing that you just do because you were homeless for like two days. Like if, if everyone who was homeless for two days went around killing people, then the whole city would just be people killing each other all the time. (sighs) So he, he kills her though. Like he just like, just bam, box her over the head. And then those two cops come in and this is where it really gets bad because he, he becomes like a fucking Jason Voorhees character where, (laughs) where one of the cops goes into a room and then boom, he 
bashes the cop over the head. Uh, or no, he, he, he choke holds him and it's, it's like, he's sticking his tongue out and it's like, I'm sorry, I had to do this. I just want to get, I just want people to remember me. And then he kills him. And then the old cop comes in and then boom, he comes out of the darkness and he bashes him over the head with a toaster. And then he gets a gas can and he pretends to pour gas all over them. And then he lights the whole house on fire. I mean, (laughs) you just killed three people, bro. You just killed three people for what? Like, for what? Because you were homeless for two days? <laughs> like, see, this guy had some problems. This character, he was he was not as good of a person as the female hustler. He, he had some demons inside of him. And the, the d- killing three people, though, I just don't understand it. I really don't. I, I thought, now, I don't like him anymore. I don't want him to succeed. You know, like, that. that's, okay, like, F you, you know, like it wasn't an understandable thing where like, oh, it was an accident. Like, oh no, I accidentally, I accidentally like fucking burned the house down. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Wah. It wasn't like that. It was like he purposefully did that and then he's walking out with swagger and he's like, oh no, I really shouldn't have done that. But he doesn't even say that. Like, he has no remorse. He is just full-on psychopath by the end of this movie. And I was like, oh. Like, I I actually like this character a little bit. And then he did that. But then, oh no, he wakes up and it's fine. Because it never happened. And he's, he's totally okay. And he's got his wife and children back. And, you know, everything's good. And he's like, and it's like, okay, at least he didn't kill people for real. At least he still has a chance to go get some madam, uh, madam suspicion. Because, I mean, who wouldn't like to suspish her madam? Uh, but what ends up happening instead is that he, it's like this whole thing about his wife hired the services of madam suspicion. And that was another thing was... You know, you could have had it be where, like, it was a test where the whole point was that he would, everyone would forget who he is. So, ooh, I have a fresh start. I can just do whatever I want. And then maybe he could have gotten with Madam Suspicion, and then it would have been like, oh, shit, you failed the test. So now you're going to forever live without your identity, and you're just going to be a no one. And, like, that would have been pretty scary, actually. That would have been better, like, for that to have happened. Like, and you have this big, long, basic instinct-style scene, of course, in the middle. But instead, his wife, like, quickly reveals at the end that that the whole thing was, like, this service thing where you you could hire someone to give you a potion and, like... (laughs) A very weird thing. I guess it just gave him a dream? It just gave him, like, a a bad dream with this potion? Uh, It was very weird. Because it just comes out of nowhere at the very end after, like, every single other possibility has been exhausted. And then his wife, right after that, she's like, Eh, babe, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe it was wrong. Sorry! And then it's like, okay, we're just going to move forward now. Like, that was an everyday occurrence. Like, I'm sorry, but that that was really weird, too. Like, the way that she's like, I did all this. I had, I got this potion, and I I put it in your stuff. And, you know, ha, 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 you learned your lesson. You're not going to cheat on me anymore, walking around like a free agent. And, And he's like, oh, you really did that to me, babe? That's crazy. And then she's like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> like, it's a fucking Leave it to Beaver episode where fucking Beaver Cleaver uh, d- does a little, he, he smokes a little hit of a pipe, of his dad's pipe. And then at the end of the episode, he's like, sorry, sorry, Pa, sorry, Dad. <laughs> and then it, and then the movie's over. And then the movie's fucking over. And, 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 but the twist is the big twist throughout the movie you you're really 
it's 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 like you have a detective's handbook or I mean a detective's notebook and all the cast names are on the uh, the the book and throughout the movie he's just crossing every name off the list until the very very end of the movie and that was where it was sort of weak because the movie acted like you weren't going to suspect that this homeless woman uh taint or tank you weren't going to suspect her, but she was like the only character left to suspect. It would have been a lot more creepy and weird and out of nowhere if it was just some random guy, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, like just some random guy in the background. But no, it was the only main character really left was this, this homeless woman. You know, they had this part in the movie where she she took she takes him to this bar and and this was one of the strange sequences where she takes Robert to this bar and they steal some quote unquote moonshine and then she's supposedly selling uh li- liquor to people to other homeless people and that's how she survives and whatever and so i guess they're implying that she also sells magic potions so that's that's the story and I don't know and you see what I mean though about not really committing to the ideas in terms of at the very end of the movie you have the wife just suddenly come out and say oh this happened and then they show like a little flashback a little tiny flashback and it's like okay we're moving on bye and if 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 they let the ideas flesh out more, if they let them breathe more, then the movie would have been much better. But still, as it stands, I thought it was okay. It was mid. It was mid-level. Uh, there were some great parts in it. I'm trying to think of what would my favorite scene be. Well, I guess, I guess just any scene with fucking Madam Suspicion, just fucking, uh, you know, I mean, any scene with her obviously probably my least favorite scene i don't know there were so many interactions that he had that it's there was like a weird interaction where he like goes up to this guy playing the violin and like it it just goes kind of on for like three minutes or something and and that kind of felt weird uh but but then again like that moment kind of fleshed out a little bit but I don't know, like, and then there's this party gets on the bus, that takes like 10 seconds, and then he he goes to like a crack house at some point, and <laughs> that was out of nowhere, really weird, and that went on for like one minute, and it, it was, it was very bizarre. Oh, 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 I remember, I remember the best scene of the film, there was a similar scene to the, the pickup line in the female hustler where, he has been kicked out of his office and he's in the parking garage and he can't get into his car because he doesn't have his keys. And that was another thing was like, I guess the car was given, was like assigned to someone else in this alternate reality because that didn't make sense. Like, where's the keys? Like, wh- who has his keys? Who has his original keys if he still has his car? then where are his original keys? I don't know. But he does make a phone call to his wife, and he calls her, and he's like, Hey, babe, I don't know what's going on, but everything's fucked up. I don't have any keys. I'm at the parking garage. If you can come and give me a spare key, I'll, I explain later. That That was the funniest part. I explain later. I love you. Bye. I was like, <laughs> it was hilarious. That whole and that that phone call was hilarious. It was <laughs> like I don't know what's going on, but everything's fucked up. <laughs> like, and that was another thing too. Like. We never even got to see her listen to that message. Like, that would have been the funniest thing ever, to listen to her 
sitting next to her new husband in this like fake reality and then she's like listening to the message and it's like oh what's this what's this message here play hey babe i don't know what's going on everything's fucked up i'm at the parking garage next to the firm i don't have my key i don't i can't get into my car Come over here and give me my spare key. I love you. Bye. And, and, you know, she's just sitting there like, what the fuck is this shit? And her husband's like, who's calling you, babe? Like, that's another thing. He He left a voice message on her phone saying, babe, I love you. Uh... I guess she could just say it's a it's a fake number, but then he he visits their house several times in the movie, like it, it was like Spawn, you know, where Spawn comes back from the dead and he keeps on going to their house to visit them, to go see Wanda, Wanda, and you know he's he's trying to get his Wanda back, and he he goes there over and over again, but she doesn't recognize him because. He looks like a fucking uh, girl bratwurst <laughs> with no onion. <laughs> and that that's what he did throughout the whole movie. And uh, and there was one part, too. There was a, another hilarious part where, <laughs> where he goes back into their house after they both left for work. And he starts making himself pancakes. <laughs> Like, out of everything, out of everything he could have, I guess that there wasn't anything else in the fridge. Like, there wasn't any sort of uh, meats or, like, any steak or any burger or any chicken or anything. Like, no, he just gets all the pancake ingredients out and he, like, relives cooking pancakes with his daughters. (sighs) That was another great sequence. And then that's when he also gets killed and then there's this real, probably another bad thing was when he gets killed by the new husband who just suddenly appears at the right moment uh, to come back in and be like, oh shit, there's that guy in my house again. I temporarily, I'm not temporarily suspecting him anymore. I'm killing his ass. And then he gets, of course, the same gun that Nellie Ann had in her house it, but it's now in their house, and he's like, "Okay, you want to play, motherfucker?" You know, he he should have he should have gone up to him and been like, "Trick or treat!" <laughs> and he should have been like, "Because he he gave me some Busta Rhymes vibes." He he was another good actor in the film, and I didn't mention him until now, uh, but he did do a good job. And then Robert gets shot, and you think, oh, great, he's dead. And, so, you know, he wasn't a great guy. You know, he was a cheater. He's a, <laughs> He was technically a serial killer at this point. Uh, but then there's this really weird thing that re- was really out of place where he narrated, and he said, hmm, did this guy deserve what he got? Or was he hallucinating, do some some drugs on the street? What do you guys think? And that, but then he wakes up like it's from a dream, and it's like, well, what was the point of that voiceover? Like, you you don't have to have that voiceover to tell us. Like he he you it's 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 a movie. It's visual storytelling. Uh, so that was really weird. He never narrates again throughout the whole movie. And so that was the only point. It was a weird thing. It was like a, it was like a, a, a school video. Like, you know, you go to school and you watch like a video on like what happens when you, when you have wet dreams or something like, (laughs) or no, 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 like the bullying ones. Oh, it was exactly like the bullying ones. Like, you know, where you have a couple of bullies they're bully. They're bullying on a kid, and then the video freeze frames, and you just see these bullies, and they're like spitting in this kid's face, and he's like a fat kid like me. I'm a big fat boy. Uh, well, actually, I'm not anymore. I'm already losing weight. Uh, but <laughs> it's like the same thing, at where 
it's it's like a bullying situation and then the video pauses and you have a voiceover and it's like hmm what do you guys think should happen do you guys think he's deserving this bullying what do you think you what would you do if you were in this scenario and then that's where the teacher pauses and they're they're like all right class what would you guys do if you saw someone getting bullied and then a couple of kids raise their hands and they're like, I would help the bully. Oh, no, no, you would not. Do not help that bully. You will not help that bully. Like, that's what this was like, where it was like all of a sudden, like, it's like, OK, we're going to have like a deep psychological discussion about this, about did this guy deserve it? What happened? How did this happen in the first place? Like, I'm already thinking that. I've been thinking that the whole movie. I've been thinking, like, what the hell happened to this guy? Like, what happened to him? So I didn't need that narration. The narration was stupid. And, of course, my last complaint... Which, I wouldn't say that all the music was bad. I wouldn't say that it was bad per se, but... There were a lot of moments in the film where it felt like if the music was custom-made for this movie... Because I didn't really feel like it was. I just felt like it was probably just free music, which is understandable. I mean, (laughs) there's just only so much you can do when you're a smaller film... Uh, but it did feel like if you had custom music for this film, and if you, you made this film, you had, like, custom made to to fit these scenes, then it would have been a lot better because, I don't know, like, the, the music was just kind of generic, and it in some cases it was just kind of, like, there, and it, it didn't really fit, and it was just kind of like, eh. I I would have I really felt like it, it should have had like I don't know like a jazzy saxophone type of thing like it it had a very the whole movie had like a chill vibe to it like that was the mis- that was the real mystery to me was that the whole movie this this is a a very scary situation but for some reason there's like a chill vibe going on like you're sitting in a fucking diner with a sexy ass redheaded waitress coming up to you and she gives you a coffee and donut and you're eating coffee and donuts <laughs> and you know like it's like this chill diner atmosphere like you're in fucking Twin Peaks uh that that was like the atmosphere of this movie regardless of everything that happened and so i really felt like uh to fit the chill atmosphere, it would have been just better to have, like, a saxophone playing, or, like, the the taxi driver-style music, that would have fit, too, uh, but the music was a little bit of a problem, but it was better in the sense that, you know, with the female hustler, I complained that that movie was, like, a, like, a radio station where you're just letting all these random songs play, uh, well, in this movie, it did feel more purposeful, where mostly all the music was just music that tried to fit the scenes. It it just didn't really work out as well as it could have if it was custom made for the film. So anyways, I enjoyed the film pretty much. I wouldn't say it's the best movie of the year, <coughs> but I wouldn't say it's anywhere near being the worst movie of the year. You know, I've seen like, 30 F movies this year. You know, I've seen some ter- terrible movies this year. This is by far from the worst one. So anyways, please like this video, comment, tell me what you thought of Temporary Suspicion, and please, please go watch this movie. Show Nellie Ann some support because she needs it. You know, and it was funny too because somebody, like, I, I don't know how, like, fucking, uh, in real life, Madam Suspicion, she is harder to get a hold of than the fucking Zodiac Killer. Like, she, <laughs> like she just disappears for long periods of time. And, like, I don't know, like, I feel like I need to, like, I don't know, like, put, like, a symbol of a churro in the sky. <laughs> a churro in the middle of the night sky. And then maybe she'll finally, <laughs> she'll finally come over 
and and it makes something with me because she's so talented. She is like a she's an she's the she is the twenty twenty two Salma Hayek. You know, she she's I would say she's better than Salma Hayek. I mean, she's really really good uh, for the small amount of time that she's in. And please, it's it's free. It's a free movie on Tubi. It's not going to hurt you to watch it. Show some support to fucking the the modern American psycho. Show some support to his wife, to all the other people who made this movie, because it it was worth it. I I also felt too. It probably would have been better to release this movie around Christmas time, because it did become winter at some point in the film. And and so he needed the the coat. It was it was cold out, and that was another reason I thought, oh, someone's going to steal his coat at some point. But no, nobody bothers American Psycho. Nobody does. And please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more honest movie reviews. Because I can't wait until the next movie that this guy does. Because I'm just going to review and watch everything he does automatically. Because I know at least it'll be entertaining. So goodbye everybody. See you soon.